Hello everybody and welcome back to Med School EU. My name is Andre and today we are going to talk about chemical kinetics and catalysis. First, what is kinetics? It is the study of rates of reactions, right? So we talked about equilibrium and we talked about how equilibrium involves rates of reactions and when the two rates of the forward and the opposite um, reaction are equal, that is when the reaction is at equilibrium. Well, now we can study the rates of reactions and we can measure those using some of the principles in kinetics. So, for example, if we have an equation of H2 plus iodine that makes two uh, hydrogen iodide, we can measure the rate in terms of a reactant or we can me measure the rate of the reaction in terms of the product. So let's first start with the reactant. So if we have rate, looking for the rate of the entire reaction, we would have the negative, if we're talking about reactant, it must be re ex expressed in the negative because our concentration will be decreasing. So um, here's the formula, negative delta concentration of H2 over delta T. Delta meaning change. And the square brackets represent concentration. I have discussed this before. So when we're looking at the change in concentration, so we're typically going to take the final minus the initial. So you're going to take two points during the reaction. You're going to assess the concentration of each of the reactant and you will measure. So for example, here, we're going to have negative concentration of hydrogen at the second time. So, so let's say we start the reaction at zero seconds and then we measure the concentration at 10 seconds. So in that case, uh, the T2 is going to be the 10 seconds minus the concentration that was initially there, which is T1. So it's at time zero. And here we're going to take final time minus the initial time. And that's how it's going to work out. So you're going to be given the concentration, you will be given the times, and you have to measure the rate of the reaction. It's just simply finding the average rate of the reaction. And because our concentration would result in a negative number, we need to place this negative in front of it in order to have a positive because we can't have a negative concentration. It becomes a negative number simply because obviously at 10 seconds, there will be less of the reactant than there was at the very beginning because we have consumed some over the 10 second period. However, if we are going to express the rate of the reaction in terms of the product, we would have to put a positive. So we don't have to write a positive, but just as an indication, you're not gonna have a negative in front of the concentration here. And we're going to have to display the coefficient that is labeled there. We'll have to divide it by half because the coefficient here is two. Um, and so therefore we're gonna have to divide by half the entire change in concentration of HI, which will come out as positive because we are increasing the concentration here. So in terms of this reaction, what this represents is that the concentration of HI increases at twice the rate that the concentration of H2 and I2 decreases. So for example, if I have 100 molecules of I2, that means I will produce 200 molecules of HI. So for every 100 molecules of I2 that is consumed, I will produce 200 molecules of HI. And this is why when we're measuring the rate of the entire reaction, this is reaction rate. When you measure the, the rate of the entire reaction, you would have to divide this rate of formation by two in order to measure the overall rate of the reaction. Now here's a general formula that you can use. The capital letters are your elements and the lowercase letters are your coefficients. So this would be the formula that is used. You can use any of these, either this one or this one or this one or this one, depending on what is given to you. So for example, if you're given the concentration of B at two different times and you wanna find the 
reaction rate of the entire overall reaction, then this one is, is the one you would use. Uh, or if you're given a product, then you will define it based on the product D because you know that the product D will form at this rate and you can measure the overall reaction rate using this formula. So this is like an overall reaction rate uh, formula that you can use in order to determine rates of reaction based on reactants or based on products. Now let's discuss catalysis. So catalysts are substances that speed up the rate of the reaction. And we have talked about catalysts in the past. It's uh, outlined in a biology video where we talked about enzymes. Enzymes are biological catalysts. Well, here we're going to be talking about catalysts in general and how they work and how they operate. So essentially we know that they speed up the rate of the reaction. Now we're going to discuss how they do it and how catalysts generally work. So let's talk about this simple graph over here. We're graphing energy to reaction progress. If you're confused about reaction progress, it simply means how the reaction progresses over time. It's a self-explanatory words. Energy, we're talking about potential energy um, that is dealing with the energy of the molecules involved. So we're starting here with the reactants marked by R and we end here with the products marked by P. Now this state here is called the transition state where the reactants are rendered to the point where they're about to form to be products. Now what we measure here is going to be the energy required for the reactants to go from being in reactant state to the transition state. And this energy required is called activation energy marked by E subscript A. It's called activation energy. So activation energy is the energy required for a reaction to occur. Now what catalysts do is they lower the activation energy, meaning that now the reaction will occur faster. Not that we're going to produce more products or we're going to have less reactants. The concentrations of products and reactants do not change. The only thing that changes is the speed at which you form your products. Now, another thing to consider about catalysts is that a catalyst will not be consumed by the reaction. So at the beginning, it may be present as a reactant and will actually get used in the elementary steps. However, in the end, it will be produced again. So therefore, it isn't actually consumed during the entire reaction. It is present at the beginning and it is present at the very end once the reaction is complete. Now, one other concept I wanted to discuss here is the concept of thermochemistry, which involves heat of the reaction. So essentially, we're going to have the measurement of our energy of the reactants and the measurement of the energy of the products. And this will be specifically heat energy. So reactants and here's the products. So if we see that the reactants have higher energy than the products, then our reaction will be exothermic. Exothermic meaning that heat was released or energy released. And you may ask, what do you mean by released? Well, if we have a reaction system, there is the system where the reaction is taking place and there's the surrounding environment. The surrounding environment has energy and the system where the things are reacting have energy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred. So what happens is in, in an exothermic reaction, the reactants are going to release energy into the environment and this is why the products will have lower energy in the end. And that is called an exothermic reaction. Exo meaning external, outside. So the energy will be released. The reaction, the, the substances that are involved in it will lose energy to the environment. Now the opposite occurs over here where the products have more energy than the reactants. So it must have got it somewhere. Well, it gets it from the environment. The environment is going to give energy to the system and this is called an endothermic reaction. 
In this endothermic reaction, we have energy that is being absorbed. Now, your heat energy will be measured by uh, something called enthalpy, which is marked by delta H. And delta H in an exothermic reaction is going to be negative. It's going to be a negative number in kilojoules or joules. And the delta H in the endothermic reaction will be a positive number in kilojoules. Positive because the actual reaction gains energy. Uh, and here it's going to be negative because the actual reaction loses energy. This concludes our lecture for today. And you should click on the next video to watch the second part of Equilibrium where we're going to talk about Le Chatelier's principle.